In this episode, we're talking about how to break through that damn fear of yours and how to motivate yourself. If you like what you hear, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell to stay up to date on my channel, and I hope you enjoy. Um, so we're talking about today, we are talking about motivation and fear. Uh, and I'll break that down for you because that is super broad and you can unravel that a lot. But, uh, earlier, I think yesterday, <clears throat> yesterday I was listening to a podcast, a Joe Rogan podcast and Joe Rogan mentioned that there was a lot of self-help people on the internet and that and they do a lot of talking about like theoretical topics and self-help on how to train the brain to be more successful and and a lot of fluff but no real practical advice and uh, I was in total agreement 100% agreement although I do think uh, there are some things that you mentally have to get past, but, uh, the reason that I have this podcast, uh, there's this, this whole YouTube channel that encompasses all the things that I talk about is because I think there is something missing and that's why I don't like calling the self-help I call it self-development and I'm putting a new spin on self-development. But basically I think that you need to combine the motivational and getting past fear aspect with real practical advice. And this, this is something where when I was younger, it, it's what it is what made me skeptical of wanting to learn and read in like a book. Like a, if, I, if someone's like, you should read more. And like, I already know what the hell they're going to say. They're probably going to say, you got to work hard. You got to study, blah, blah, blah. And like all this self-help, self-help crap that we already know of. I thought I already knew. I already thought I already knew all that stuff. Um, but then as I started getting into this more, I expanded my horizons just outside of strictly self-help. You realize there's so much damn information out there that it's very practical, depending on the book that you read. Very practical, and it helps you out so freaking much in life. So much information that I've, I've acquired, and it's still a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit of information compared to the amount of information that is out there. I have a tiny speck of that information, but I have a lot more than I used to. Um, but... The point of this podcast, the point of this whole YouTube channel, is to surface that information that has helped me so much and surface practical information, not just fluff and bullcrap, not just, ooh, you're going to wake up tomorrow and you're going to be strong and, and all that stuff. That's great. That is great as a first burst of in inspiration, or motivation. But you need to also know the practical ways to better yourself. And that's why I don't just read self-help books. I read everything. Uh, I've talked about this a hundred times and you might be sick of it, but I, I read books on how do I invest better so I can come up with a system to give me the best outcome with the least amount of effort and I can just invest my money wisely, save money on the ta the taxes and and from that to eating healthier what are the ways that i can eat healthier and how do i negotiate how do I, every single aspect uh of bettering yourself i i read up on and i study and i don't just stick with fluff self-help like oh you'll be better off you gotta wake up tomorrow and be strong so i totally track with what joe rogan is saying and it's the reason why i've twist i've uh not twist I've added a bit of a twist to, to self-help. This is self-development podcast, but it is not just self-help bullshit here. This is this is stuff that you can literally take and start doing on your own tomorrow. And you'll see from the videos that I post, these are practical things. Now, that said, I still think there's two parts of this all. 
One is, um, it's like a car almost. Think about it like a car. One is you need, you need to have the inspiration, the fire, the desire, that burn deep inside to go do all these things. It's a lot of freaking effort. Re, you know, studying and reading and bettering yourself. It's not like you're running and exercising, but it is mentally draining and it's time consuming and you have to want to do it. And that's where, that is where you need to be motivated. You need to train your thinking to say, I'm not afraid to do this. And you need to have practical steps. You need to have practical steps uh, to overcome these mental blocks. And my wife is calling me. Let's. <laughs> um, but you need to have practical steps to get there too. But it's a two-way thing. It's like a car, like I said. You need the gas. The gas moves the car. Gas is the fire. You need that damn fire, that inspiration, that motivation, the gas to the car. And But then, then you need to know how to drive the car. You need to know the tools, the principles, the exact way to operate the vehicle. And if you don't have both pieces, it's very difficult. You can be extremely motivated and you could hear some video or some speech that makes you extremely motivated. But, uh, but if you don't have the tools to do... To better yourself, then it doesn't, maybe it helps a little bit, but it's not going to help as much and vice versa. You could have all these tools and all this information out there, but if you don't have the inspiration to go and acquire that information and act on it, then who the, who the hell cares if the information is out there? So you need both. So I, gr I agree with Joe Rogan, but I also have a different thought. I think you need both. And that's why in my book, in my book that I wrote, I talk about both. In the beginning, I have an introduction, which is supposed to light that damn fire under your feet. It's supposed to say, look, uh, you have a few options in life and you need to pick which one you want. And then later down the road, when you are older and y you are on that damn deathbed of yours, are you going to look back in life and say, Oh, uh, and complain and, and, and look at everyone else who maybe got further or had other accomplishments. And are you going to complain about that? But you, if you do that, it was all because of the things that you put forward. And uh, it was it's because of the effort. Uh, and uh, there are obviously some people who are way more advantaged than other, others. And I, completely understand that that is a reality of life and that is why i try to spread information and inspiration because i think that information and inspiration will empower every single person and there are some there are some rich mother efforts that grow up in a rich family have all these connections and are just way better off than most people um there are others who are what way more disadvantage and that's not fair and my whole goal is to spread this stuff so i can equal the playing field because i think that someone who is more disadvantaged with the right information could be better off and it's going to be way harder but it, they could be better off um so in my book in the, the beginning i talk about the inspiration motivation to to getting where you need to be and then the, all the rest of it is practical stuff. Practical stuff, how to be a leader, how to communicate powerfully, how to eat healthy, how to invest. I got a whole freaking thing of things that you can do to better yourself. Goal setting principles. I've got managing people. Thinking about the small things that people often miss. Meditation. A lot of things in here. And, and so I think it's important to have both of those. The fire and the practical, the practical experience. So I agree. I agree with Joe Rogan, but I also have different thoughts. And, and so here is the motivation and the fear aspect of things that I talk about in, in, in the introduction of my book. Um, 
There are three paths in this world. And at any moment, you can change paths. You can get on one path and then change paths and then go back. But there are three paths. And <clears throat> I equate these paths to like an airport walkway. If you've ever been to an airport, there's little, you can walk to your gate. You get go walk to your gate to get to the, your airplane. Or there's a little auto walk and it's just like moving you forward. And usually you see some kids running on it, but lazy people, including sometimes definitely myself, will, will use the auto walk to get to their destination. Now, that little auto walk is similar to the three paths, the three choices that you have in life. And those three choices are you can fight the auto walk. So if you've ever seen like a kid who just likes to play around and he's then the kids run in the opposite direction of the auto walk. Um, now, usually they don't really get anywhere. Maybe they make a little progress, but they usually just stay in still. They're not, they're not, they're fighting a forward moving direction and they're trying to go backwards. They usually just stay still. Others, most people, a lot of people, they just take the ride, let it walk, let it take them to their destination. And then there are others that say, I want to get there fast. I need to get there very quickly. Maybe their plane is about to like board or they just don't feel like walking in a slow moving direction. And so they walk with it. Maybe they walk a little fast, but they walk with the auto walk. And those are your three. That's the metaphor for the three choices you have in life. You can either fight the forward moving direction of this world and you will literally get nowhere. And then you can't complain later in life. When you have gotten nowhere, you have, have gotten nowhere because you've been fighting it. Then there are going to be the most people, probably the on average most people who are just walking with letting life take them by. They don't, they don't necessarily fight the forward direction of life, but they're also not embracing it and they just let it take them forward. And it's an average, mediocre life and nothing to necessarily complain about. But they'll see the people who are far, far ahead of them. They say, how the hell did this person get to where they are? And the person who is way far ahead of them, all they did was embrace life's forward moving direction. And they walked forward with the auto walk. And so if you imagine an auto walk that's like 10 miles, 30 miles long. Let's just say an auto walk was 100 miles long and you had three three people. One person walked opposite direction. One person let it take them and just didn't move and just let them walk forward. They had one person who walked with it and maybe sometimes they ran, but they walked with it. You can imagine over those, over that long distance, you're going to have one person who's probably hasn't moved. One person who slowly just goes forward and one person who is very, very far ahead. That is the metaphor of this life. You have the options. Unless you live in a place that is depriving you of these options, which there are, and I get that. But if you have the choices to make these options and you're not doing them, that is your fault. And so when you look at that auto walk metaphorically in life and you see the distances of some people, you can't complain when someone is so, so, so far ahead because they put in the damn work. And, I'm, and again, I'm saying equal. This is, I'm, let's just say they're equal opportunity of people because there are some people who are way far ahead, but they, they grew up advantaged. And that's not really fair. And someone who was behind did not. But you can catch up probably because those people who are advantaged are probably a little taking everything for granted. But considering all things equal, three of the same people who had the same opportunities, you have your choices on the on what you do. And that will depend on the distance you are in your metaphorical auto walk. And so that's your that's your choice. Do you want to be stuck moving backwards or letting life just slowly take you by and if you do that is fine life it, in this life you can choose whatever the hell you want to do but you can't complain later in life when you didn't put in the effort when you didn't learn and you didn't 
try and test and and challenge yourself and set goals and and fight your natural tendency to be fearful of taking the first step. You cannot. You cannot be upset and complain. Well, maybe you can. You can do whatever the hell you want, but it won't be justified to be doing all that complaining because you had the option and sometimes you just might not understand that you have those options or you might not even know or aware of them. There are probably some things that I'm not even freaking aware of and I'm not sitting here pretending like I'm o- uberly successful because I'm definitely not. Something that you'll always get from this podcast for me is completely straightforward. Me, no lying. And, but I'm giving you, I'm certainly trying to be moving forward with the auto walk, but I'm giving you the information now. If you heard the information now in 30 years and you're looking behind and seeing you made no progress, then you have, now you have literally no excuses. So now you know about it and you've heard about it and now you understand. These are your options. You don't have 5,000 options. You got three options. Pick which one you need to go with. And now that is the that is the motivation here. Well, there's also the fear side of things. You could be fearful of things and that's that's a natural tendency. I think fear is probably a good thing to have. Um and it's been instilled in us through evolutionary uh evolutionary experiences and fear is a great tool for certain things. But it's also it's also something that we have to overcome. So there's there's a there's some practical steps when it, we're talking about fear. You're fearful of who the hell knows, but sometimes it's uh it's like a it's like looking at a huge staircase or looking at the ocean and saying can I cross this in one big step and that's nerve-wracking thinking about that you need to to overcome fear there's probably a few things one is you need to break things down into small steps you're fearful yeah you're fearful of getting a new job or starting a business or doing whatever the hell you want to do it might be running a marathon whatever the hell you want to do you might be fearful of it and looking at that looking at overcoming that obstacle is huge it's it's like how the hell am i going to do that how in the hell am i going to start a major major business that is enough to quit my job and be my own boss how am i going to run a marathon that's 50 miles how am i going to learn this whole new skill of cooking how am i going to learn all this stuff and how am i going to do this stuff and when you look at it at that when you look at it from the big point of view it's like how am i going to accomplish all that but you need to break that down into baby steps because you need to go step by step when you look at step by step it's not that difficult it's like okay for example maybe with this podcast uh could i start a podcast that one day has millions and millions of followers i don't know by the way if i can but i'm trying millions and millions of followers that i can do full time and start my own business from it and make a living out of it that is a freaking difficult thing to do but i'm taking it step by step i'm going taking very small baby steps i'm not investing a ton of money into this i invest time on the weekends early mornings and late nights because i have a full time job and i'm taking it step by step when you think about taking on something that is so big in in and you don't break it down into phases or milestones or baby steps it can look so big that you don't even want to tackle it so you need to write down baby steps and then once you take the first step you're like oh, okay let's go let's keep doing it now what you might say is well i don't want to do this because i know that if i if i try to do all this stuff it's not going to work out and i'll use my podcast as going to say i have no idea if this damn thing is going to work out and i honestly don't give a crap i am going to try a lot of things in this world most of them are not going to be things that are super super successful and i get that I don't give a crap what anyone says or thinks. I don't give a crap if this turns out to be the most successful thing in the world or not. What I look at is 
I try to do things that I enjoy. And I know that every single endeavor that I attempt or try, and I, and I, when I, I, I'm not, I'm not going into this thinking I'm going to fail. I work my damn ass off, but, uh, I also don't going in, I, I don't go into things knowing that if it, if it's not a huge success, I'm going to go cry in my room and, and be upset at myself and, uh, think of myself as a failure. Cause that is so stupid. Think about that you just so you're just never going to try new things. You're never going to attempt things. You you want to open up your own business. You're not going to try it, but you can start small. I'm not investing a ton of money into this damn thing. A lot of time, but not a lot of money. And so I'm not going to lose everything if it doesn't go well. And if it doesn't go well, I look at it as a stepping stone. I've learned something. I definitely learn a ton doing all this. I have no idea what the hell I'm doing. I'm just talking to a damn mic. Uh, I'm getting a little better at the video aspect. I got a couple pieces of equipment that's not a lot of money. And if it works out, beautiful. If it doesn't, I will do something else and I will keep working at it. And what I talk about in my book is that is that is there's an aspect of luck that I think needs to be talked about. There's an aspect of luck. And it's really not luck. It's it's like statistics, I think about it. If you understand how luck works, then you can be more lucky. If you don't understand it, you're not going to be more be more lucky. And now that might be like, what the hell are you talking about, Chris? What do you mean I can be more lucky? Well, it's just statistics. The more I work my ass off and try things and challenge myself and attempt to do things, statistically speaking there's more high chances of those things turning out well. But if you're sitting on your couch all day and you're not doing absolute shit, then you can't complain when someone else got lucky who was doing a million things. Of course they're going to get more lucky than you. You didn't do shit. So use luck to your damn advantage. Um, It's Luck is just statistics. If I keep doing this more and more and more and more, and eventually I get more followers. And then, of course, maybe the more people who listen, the more lucky I might get. And then the more someone might share this with somebody else and the luck will just keep coming. But if I just sat on my couch, you think someone's going to, someone's gonna just going to come drop m- money on my desk and say, oh, whoa, Chris, beautiful job watching that TV. Here's some money. Uh, it's not a reality. And you need to stop thinking like that because that is poor thinking. So you need to keep doing things and make your own luck. That is how you make your own luck. And so I look at this whole thing as starting things are very f- scary. Take baby steps. You take little baby steps. Because if you look at the whole thing and say, I'm going to start a business. We need to invest hundreds of thousands of dollars to get this business moving. Well, there's probably a way you can start with baby steps without without investing hundreds of thousands of dollars or millions because I don't have that. So I'm, I'm starting small. Then there's an aspect of fear of that whole f- failure, fear, fearing that you aren't going to, it's not going to turn out well. And you need to create your own luck. One and two, you need to understand that every single little endeavor that you go after is a stepping stone. It's not a determinant of you're successful or you're a failure. If this podcast goes horribly wrong and my book sells almost essentially nothing, enough to pay for groceries one time, I'm not going to consider myself a complete and total failure because I'm going to do something else. And I've actually learned a ton. So when you look at it like that, you you stop being afraid of every one occurrence of, oh, shit, if I do this horribly wrong. It is going to, I'm a failure. I'm going to be hard on myself. I'm going to go to my room and just put my head in my pillow and be very upset. And if you have that frame of thinking, then you will not attempt more things. You'll stop challenging yourself. You'll stop going after new endeavors that will potentially put you in a better lifestyle. As soon as you do that, as soon as you are that scared little cat afraid to do that that stuff then yes you have created a very very specific 
position in your life where you will not get lucky because you're not doing anything. And a lot of it is not just luck, by the way. A lot of it is hard work and being dedicated and put your mind towards it. But if you if you're not going after anything, nothing is going to come to you. That's not how this world works and nothing is going to come to you. And if maybe something potentially comes to you, you can continue playing the lottery and hope that a miracle happens. And if that's how you want to live your life, go the hell ahead. I do not care. But if you want to be on a path of bettering yourself, then get motivated. Think about the three paths that you have and then stop being afraid to move forward. I don't know what the hell it is. It could be the fear of the big aspect. And I gave you my, the big, the big thing of going after something. It's, it's, I just gave you all my recommendations on how to break that down and think about it differently. Or it could be the fear of what someone might think. And you need to stop giving a crap what people think and go after it. And then once you're, once you have that frame of mind, you need to also move forward and learn practical things that'll move you forward. You need the gasoline. And once you got that damn gasoline, you need to learn real things. Gasoline only works when a car is using the tools. You can't, otherwise it's useless. You need to have the practical stuff. And that's on this channel what we talk about. We give you the goddamn fu fuel, the fuel that you need to push yourself forward, to wake up early, to stop being a freaking afraid of everything. And then we give you the tools. Maybe it's not always me giving you the tools. I have people come on here who give you the tools, but we give you the damn tools. And if you can't find it here, then you find it somewhere else. You read another book, you talk to somebody else, but don't be someone who thinks that they know everything. That is what you need to live a very successful life. And I will stop there. Get your ass to work.